Hey, this is Rene. Welcome back for another video on this channel. Today, you will learn how to create an indicator that shows all the highs and lows in your charts and also how to write an expert advisor that does exactly what you see on the chart right now. It is taking this indicator with the highs and lows and then helps you to manage your trades, your trades that you created or opened manually maybe. And for example, for this short trade, the expert advisor will trail the stop loss at all of the highs that are created in the chart. This video is presented by BM Trading. Learn to code your own expert advisors. Link in the description. So this makes sure that you cannot mess up your trade management and it also helps you to make the trade management objective. Let's dive into the programming. So first of all, let's have a look at how to create an, ex uh, an indicator, sorry, that writes or creates all of the highs and lows in the chart. So here in my programming, uh, I will just explain you the code and also I will upload the code, this is important, to the school community, which I will link below in the comments. Um, if you are not a member, you can join, it's free. Uh, the trial is free and you can download the code in the community. So this is the indicator. First of all, we have a bunch of properties up here where we define that this indicator should be displayed in the chart window. This makes sense because it is displayed in the chart window. We have two buffers and two plots for the highs and lows, obviously. Then we have a bunch of indicator properties for the highs, where we define how the highs look like, and the same for the lows. We have one input where we can define how um, the, the, the highs and lows should be um, drawn. Like The idea is that we draw all of the highs and the lows if it's the lowest point of the, or if, 10 bars left of the low are higher and 10 bars at the right side of the low are higher. Also for highs, we, we check if 10 bars on the left are lower and 10 bars on the right are lower. And if we change the input here, for example, let's say we go to 20, this will filter out, theoretically, a lot of these highs and lows. Oh wait, I have two uh, on the chart right now. Yeah, so now with the input 20, it looks like this. And if I change again um, the input, let's say to 5, we will have a lot more highs and lows, of course. So this is how the uh, indicator works, and this is what the one and only input is for. Then we create two arrays. These are the arrays for our buffer, where we want to store all of the data in. We set the indicator digits the same amount as the digits of the chart symbol, of course. We set the index buffer, so this is important to map the index buffers to the arrays. So this is how the indicator knows what array belongs to which buffer. So if we have two buffers, they will have index 0 and 1 here. So index 0 could be the highest, for example, index 1 could be the lowest. This is why we do the mapping here. Then we set these arrays as series, so it's easier to work with them later on. Then we also set the arrow type. This is just how the arrow looks. Like if I change this to, uh, I don't know, some other number, it will look different. I don't know how it will look. Yeah, it looks like this now. But yeah, you can, you can change these um, values if you want your arrows to look differently. Then I added some shift. So the error are displayed a little bit above and below the highs. And then I also define the empty value. Like if there is no value for a bar, we do have an empty value. And that's just how you define it using the plot index set double function. So this is everything like the pre-work that you have to do before of writing the actual, actual code and the logic for your program. The actual logic is found in the onCalculate function and it's actually very, very short and easy. So what we do here, first of all, we calculate how many bars we have to um, update. So for the first run of the uh, onCalculate function, we of course have to calculate for the whole uh, chart. So this is why we use rates total minus previous calculated because previous calculated is zero for the first run and rates total always is the total amount of bars in a chart. Then if the um, 
Yeah, and then here we would just make sure that we do not get an array out of range error here in the for loop when we set the index or the, the values in the array as empty value first. Like for every single bar, we now loop through all of the bars in the chart. And before we do anything else, we, in, uh, we initialize the value at index i in our arrays with empty value. Later on, we will override it if there's a high or low, but this is important so that the rest of our code works. Then we, like how we do this is we loop through all of the bars starting from the right side and then we go all the way to the very left side. And we always have to have a look at the next bars x multiplied with two values. So the next uh, 20 bars, for example, or 40 bars or 10 bars, depends on our bars x input, they are important for us. And the extreme is always in the middle of these bars. So the extreme is always at i plus bars x, right? And then we also check the highest uh, bar out of the total range. Like Let's say bars x is 10. So for the, for the current bar, the extreme would be at index, um, wait, let me change this back to 10. Uh, so, so the theoretical extreme would be at bar 10. So if we go 10 bars back, uh, would be here. This is our extreme. And um, now we see that there is no high. This is why in the next step, we check for the, 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 the double sized range, pretty much the highest point. This is what we do with the I highest function where we have a bigger range. Uh, in, in, in fact, it's bars x multiplied with 2 plus, eins, uh, plus 1. And um, yeah, then we check if the highest index out of this range is the same as the extreme. Because as, as I said, the extreme is always in the middle. And if this is true, then we found a new high. Then we just put this high into the highest array because it's the buffer for all of the highs. And that's pretty much it. Afterwards, I mean, this code is uh, something else, but this is also the same, first of all, that we do for the lows. Pretty much the same. We get the lowest, we check if it's the same as the extreme, and if it's true, then we, we update the low. So what is this code for? This code is, like, if I delete this code uh, from here and here, uh, like this, so if I delete it, I can still run it. And you can see it's, it's still kind of working. But what we see is sometimes we see two highs in a row without a low, right? So this is why I added the code for that I just deleted. If I add it back in, you will see like right now there are two highs in a row. But if I compile the code again with this code added, one high is gone. So what I do here is let's have the example for the highs. If we find a new high, for example, this one, then we go all the way back from this position on backwards until we find the next low. And in the meantime, whenever we find another high, we check if this other high is higher than this high or not. If it's lower, we re erase it. If it's higher, we would erase this high. And this is what this code is for. Yeah, as I said, I will upload the code to the school community. So if you're interested, um, download it there and then, then go through the code slowly to understand more. Also, this code is, of course, also added for the lows. So it makes sense to have it for both sides. So yeah, this is the indicator. Now, and this is also actually the hard part. Now let's have a look at the actual expert advisor. The expert advisor is this. The expert advisor has the include file because it uh, will have to modify positions. And then we have a bunch of inputs. Of course, the time frame, then the bars x, which we'll, we will just pass to the indicator, and the stop loss puff, uh, buffer, which buffer like this uh, to make it English. Um, and then let me also exchange it here. So what we have here is uh, three inputs. Um, then two global variables, the handle for our indicator, a bars total, and yeah, and on in it, then we initialize our indicator. Here we will lose, use our custom indicator, and we can use it using the iCustom function if the high-low YouTube program is in the indicators folder of our MetaTrader 5. We also pass the bars x input here to the indicator, so it's exactly the indicator that we want. 
After doing this, we go to the onTick function. And here, first of all, this code is, of course, only for testing. We can completely delete it if we want to use it in a live account. But if you want to use it in a tester, you might want to open a buy, a sell position, or only one of them. So this code is only for testing purposes, of course. This code uh, instead is relevant for the actual modification of your, uh, of your uh, positions. So I only want to do this once per bar because we can only find a new high and low once per bar. Then we create two variables, one for the last high, one for the last no low, and now we just have to find the last high and last low. This is what we do here. I just go backwards from the current bar, uh, or from the last bar, a maximum of 1,000 bars back, I felt like this is enough to find the last high and last low. And then we just call the um, copy buffer function for every index, which is i. And then we only get, and then we always get one value from the high array and the low array of the copy uh, of the indicator that we created before. If we find a high and low, then we just update our last high. Um, and if we find a low, we update the last low. So after processing this, we should have the value of the last high and the last low stored in these variables. And then the rest is very, very simple. We just loop through all of the positions in our account. We check if the position has the same position type as our chart symbol. And if so, we check if it's a buy position. We calculate the new stop loss, which is the, stop, uh, the last low minus the SL buffer multiplied with point. We round it. And then we update, update the stop loss if necessary. Like only if the new stop loss is higher than the old stop loss, then we create a trade object and we modify the position and we have a funky print statement in the journal. Same stuff as what we do if we find a sell position. And that's really it. Now you can see the, the indicator programming part is actually more confusing and more complex. Um, but yeah, if you download both of these programs from the from the community make sure to post uh, or to store the uh, high low um, youtube indicator in the indicators folder and the high low tsl youtube in the experts folder and then compile it and you can use it or you can also copy the code from here from this video that's pretty much it hope you liked it and this is like a little introduction in how to use indicators your own indicators and then use them um to write a working expert advisors with them, like for example, an easy trade management tool that helps you to get rid of your mental influences when managing trades. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about it. I'm out. And also before I leave, um, also let me know if you have any idea how we could use this indicator for other trading programs, for example, let me know in the comments. So that's it. I'm out. Have a great time. Good trades. Bye-bye.